Welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, brought to you by the 5 Reasons Sports Network. I'm your host, Jonathan, aka 3 Piece Combo, and in today's segment, we're going to be getting into yesterday's game versus the Atlanta Hawks. Now, this was probably one of the dirtiest, worst games of the season. <laughs> no way to really sugarcoat it. Yeah, we didn't really score well, you know, we didn't have much of a game plan, and it wasn't like we were doing great things defensively either. You know, they were missing a lot of pretty open shots. And they were missing a few guys as well. Obviously, we were missing Jimmy Butler. Tyler Hero was his second game back coming from injury, but wasn't able to deliver tonight. So today's segment, uh, you know, we're going to get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. As always, first of all, like the video. Free support for the channel. Free support for the 5 Reasons Nation. You guys are 5 Reasons Nation. I appreciate you watching this video. And as well, I want you to comment you're good, you're bad, and you're ugly. And after the segment with this game of the Hawks, we're going to take one, good, one, one look back at yesterday's or the previous game against the Atlanta Hawks when we were able to pick up that win. So before getting into all that, let's go ahead and start with the good. So with the good, there wasn't really a lot positives you can take away from yesterday's game, but there were a couple things that can still allow us to be happy moving forward and a little bit hopeful moving forward. Now, obviously, you don't want to hit the panic button after a six-game winning streak. You know, we're bound to lose one eventually. These back-to-backs, teams don't really split them. And, you know, having a new head coach, you know, a couple of new things definitely made it a different kind of game for this Miami Heat team coming into the back-to-back -back against the Atlanta Hawks. Now, getting into some of the good... The first thing I want to commend the team for is actually the defense. Now, we didn't play particularly a great offensive game, but as far as defense go, we held the Hawks to 94 points. They averaged about 113, so we held them to 19 points under what they normally actually get. So that was actually a great positive for me, although we lost that game. Second thing was the defense that we played on Trade Young. He finished with 18 points. Five points were in the first three quarters. He had 13 in the fourth. I don't know why we just lost track of him, and we had Goron guarding him in that, but... You know, holding them until only 50 or yeah, only 18 points, having five points before the fourth quarter starts. I like what we did with Trey Young. It just showed that Spoke can continue to cut off star players and make life hard for opposing team star players when they come and play the Miami Heat. Now, another great part of the defense is 16 steals. We got 16 steals. I don't know how we lost this game. 16 steals and we forced 23 turtle to total turnovers. And we ended up only having seven turnovers ourselves. Now, for some reason, when we have low turnovers, that seems to be the games that we lose the most. I think Eric Reed said we were like 0 for 4 or 0 for 5 when we have games with less than 10 turnovers. So maybe we need to start turning over the ball more. So uh, I, I like what we did on as far as defensively. It was still a good game overall. We were able to scrap. We were able to, to hold them to a lot less points than they normally are. And we did a much better job on John Collins as well. You know, he had 34 points last game. I think he ended up with 17 this game. So much better game overall as far as the good, the defense goes. Um, offensively, there's only one guy I can commend at all. I'm going to give Duncan Robinson his flowers. Because, you know, we do rag on him a little bit when he doesn't shoot the ball well. 5 of 11 from the field, 4 of 9 from deep. Uh, 14 points overall, actually tied for leading the team in scoring. And he had those three huge threes in the third quarter that really just allowed us to get back into the game when we were having a horrible first half. And unfortunately, we didn't see that Duncan again in the fourth quarter. But he was the only guy that was kind of giving us anything, uh, you know, consistently overall. So Duncan, thanks for your offensive performance. Nobody else really gave us anything good. So let's just go ahead and get right into the bad. So <laughs> getting into the bad for this game. Um, the whole game. That's it. Just the whole game. No, but seriously, uh, first of all, starting off the, the offense, you know, 80 points, 37% field goal shooting, 9 of 33 from deep. That you, you can't win with that type of game. You know, you couldn't win against a team in the 1990s scoring 80 points with this type of game. And it's not like we were having bad looks and we were having, you know, taking contested shots and, and contested at the rim. We were getting shots at the rim. We were getting wide open three-point looks, especially in the first half, and we just weren't hitting them. The shots just weren't falling. And, you know, the, the games like that are going to happen. Unfortunately, you know, it, that's how the NBA it is. It's a make-or-miss league, whether that's cliche or not. If you don't make the shot, you're not going to get anything. So we weren't making the shots yesterday, and, and it ended up hurting us a lot, you know, because we did a decent job keeping the game close um, until the fourth quarter. But, you know, it all kind of caught up to us, compounded us, and, and, 
you know, overflowed in the fourth quarter when the Hawks just took over and destroyed us. Um, rebounding, second bad thing about the game, rebounding 26 to 47. We give up 11 offensive rebounds. It felt like they all came in the first half to Clint Capella, who I, seem gets, who I feel seems to get away with a lot of pushing off as far as the over, back, over the back concern. So I'm not sure if they need to look into that, but I felt like Clint Capella was just pushing off over and over again to get those offensive rebounds. But 26 to 47, we did a much better, better job in the first game. I think we were only out rebounded by maybe three or four. But this game, we were just totally pounded on the glass, giving up 11 offensive rebounds. When we're already struggling to score, we can't give the other team more possessions. And we were just doing that. So that's just going to result in a loss. And that's what happened last night. And the last probably worst part of the game, you know, we'll take one more look at, at another horrible part of the game for the ugly. But that fourth quarter collapse, you know, it was not just offensive. You know, we only scored 14 points. Defensively, we gave up 13 to Trey Young. So it was a defensive problem, too. I'm not sure why we got away from that half court, full court press that we were doing with Trey Young and just making him uncomfortable. We just allowed Goron to switch on to Trey Young in the fourth quarter every single time. And Trey Young is going to cook Goron. You know, there's not there's not a question. And he, he was hitting shots from deep. You should know that Trey Young is going to have that type of range. But for some reason in the fourth quarter, we just seemed to forget Trey Young was Trey Young. We thought, oh, he has five points. He's going to stay at five points. He's not going to score anything more. Obviously, that didn't end up working out for us. And we gave up 13 points to Trey Young alone in the fourth, fourth quarter. And those 13 straight points, or 11 straight, I think he had, just blew it wide open. It was a tied game or maybe a two-point game, and he just blew it wide open at that point. So that was probably the biggest deciding factor of the game. I said in the pregame show, the only reason Miami Heat would lose that game is because of Trey Young, and that's exactly what happened. So unfortunately, that's what happened. We suffered a loss. We do have one more game before the All-Star break against the New Orleans Pelicans. I hope Jimmy's back for that game or... You know, although just maybe just let him get his rest at this point. And, you know, we have an easy second half of the schedule. Maybe we can just pick it up there. So curious to see what we do against the New Orleans Pelicans. Hopefully our offense flows a little bit better. But there was one key part of this game that really just made us lose. And I think you can put the whole game on him. And let's go ahead and get into it. Let's get into the ugly. So getting into the ugly, you know, like we talked about previously, the ugly is not always a bad ugly you know you know it's not always something the bad it might be something good like the last game bam had that sick block on john collins that spiked it out of bounds like a volleyball spot and you know this game unfortunately bam is going to be the ugly again but it's he's going to be the ugly for the bad this time he's a bad ugly 11 points two rebounds two rebounds three assists three of eight from the field that's when we're missing jimmy butler and we're having a hard time scoring and you have somebody like Clint Capella on you, you should be cooking that guy. Of course, he has a little bit more length on you. He's not. It's not going to be easy if you're already in the paint and you're already at the rim. And you know he's a shot blocker. That's what he is. Top five in the league in shot blocks. But if you have him out outside of the paint and you're able to take that quick first step past him, you should be doing that every single time. Now, I was actually looking at Brady's article. You can find that on FiveReasonsSports.com. Let me make sure that's correct. Yeah, 5 reasonsports.com. Check out Brady's new article because he did a great job breaking down what Bam was doing. And Bam just seems to want to be the best screen setter in the league. That's it. If he can get an award for having the best screen setter, if they had MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, best screen setter, he would go for the best screen setter because that's what Bam just seems to want to do. He wants to seem to, or he wants to set off ball screens. He wants to set, you know, dribble handoff screens for, for Duncan Robinson and try to get, a, you know, the assist that way. But, bam, the screen assists alone are not going to win you this game. You can't only have taken eight shots. I'm going to look at the stat sheet real quick. We had Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic, Kelly Olenek, or actually not Kelly, but he had six shots. So I don't want Bam only taking two more shots than Kelly Olenek. And I don't want five guys on the team to have more shot attempts than Bam. I understand the way that Coach Sposen sets up this offense to have him kind of the facilitator and kind of have him that centerpiece of it all and not really need to score. But when Jimmy Butler is out and this team is struggling to score, Bam needs to be that guy to go and pick it up and drive to the rim and draw fouls. And he's a great free throw shooter. I want to see him taking more jumpers. I want to see him facing up against the rim and actually trying to get this win. And unfortunately, he just didn't do that. You know, ended up with 11 points, two rebounds. You're a center, dude. You can't have just two rebounds. You should be dogging it. You did a great job last game. Didn't really full up to this game. You know, his post game's comments said he was going to be more aggressive. We've heard that before, but hopefully we're able to see if he's actually more aggressive this time. So, bam, you know, unfortunately in this episode, you are the ugly for this uh, for this good and the bad and the ugly. 
Now, as always, I want you guys to leave your comments down below. What was your good? What was your bad and your ugly? And I actually had an interesting comment last game. It came from Helman Tiofani. And he was talking about how I might, you know, how maybe just limit it to one point for each good and the bad and the ugly. So I want you guys, I'm gonna leave a comment down below when the video is posted. I wanna know, do you guys like me doing three, you know, three little pieces like we did for the good, we did defense, we did the, the turnovers and we did Duncan, or do you want me to do one topic? So I'll leave two comments down in the comment section below. You guys like whichever one you want. If you want a full good of each game, a full bad of each game, and then an ugly, or just one, one topic, you guys will get to choose. Obviously this guy, this show is for you guys. Whatever you guys wanna see is whatever I'm gonna do for you. So let me go, not, let me know in the comments down below. Also leave your good, your bad, and the ugly down below. And we're gonna get into that in the next section about the last game against the Hawks that we actually picked up the win. So let's go ahead and get into the uh, the heat, the uh, five, reasons, five Reasons Nations comments from last video. All right, Five Reasons Nation. As always, I appreciate you guys commenting. I appreciate you guys liking, you know, it just makes me feel a lot better. I feel like I'm actually doing something you guys wanna see. So it makes me feel appreciated. And I appreciate you guys so, so much for checking out these videos and commenting and taking time out of your day because I know you guys have a busy life with everything going on. So want to get into the first comment. Um, we're going to start with Varun Salwan. You know, the good playing, we played with consistency and our bench played really well against the Atlanta Hawks. Obviously, this is the win against the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, the bench played consistently. I, I love the bench, what we did. Uh, Precious played phenomenal last game. Didn't really see that this game, but, you know, that's that's kind of the, the nature of having a young rookie big. Uh, as far as not blowing lead, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. You know, we can't blow these leads. And unfortunately, that's something that w that happens frequently for this team. You know, we didn't do it as much last year, but this year we're doing a lot. Moving on to Ayan Ali, uh, we looked like an, a good NBA team without our star. We did good, look good without Jimmy. And it was nice to see that we actually were able to pick up a win without Jimmy. As far as your bad goes with the, you know, getting played without, outplayed by John Collins, uh, John Collins was kind of the recipient of the Trey Down defensive Trey Young lockdown defensive scheme. So for us to lock down Trey Young, John Collins was going to be the guy that gets open shots. So I'm going to live with John Collins beating us than, rather than Trey Young. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I do agree that you know I do like the extra physicality we were able to give Trey Young. Normally, you know, sometimes a lot of people, especially Trey Young, likes to get those fouls called. So I like that we were able to actually give a little body to him. And body him up a little bit. Uh, getting into Arlene VP, uh, Vincent and, and Precious were great. I, I love the defense from from Gabe Vincent. He's been studying that that Avery Bradley film, and it seems to be working. Um, you know, as far as the trade rumors, not sure how that's going to happen. And as far as the ugly, I agree with you. Nobody wants to play with this team in, in the playoffs. Now, getting into Young Assassin, a couple of comments actually. Um, as far as the the interview with JJ Redick, I appreciate that because I'm not sure. I didn't know that, that that's why he didn't take as many pump fakes or didn't utilize the pump fake quite as much. So thank you for that information. I appreciate that. And getting into your good, your bad, and the ugly, um, that was actually a phenomenal showing of Miami Heat basketball. I 100% agree with you. Uh, as far as Don Collins, we talked about that a little bit already. And <laughs> yeah, Coach Tho, he got another coach fired. Uh, I think he got Nate McMillan fired, who went to Atlanta, and then Lloyd Pierce got fired. So he actually got Nate McMillan fired and hired so that was interesting so young assassin appreciate you as always getting into Ta katonski uh as far as the perimeter defense oh holding holding this shot hawks to 23 percent of the three-point line i didn't actually take a deep look at that last game so that's a great job and i like that i love the two-three zone that we played last game it wasn't really i mean i guess it was effective this game because we held them 20 points under what they normally score but I like the defense. I love the zone. I love what we did to to lock down Trey Young. I loved Pres or I love Precious's game, and I love K Nunn's game last game as well. And he's definitely starting to raise his floor. And he's he got snubbed from the rising stars because K Nunn has been falling out. Getting into the bad, um, I do agree. I feel like this team gets relaxed. It's something they've mentioned in their post show or not in the post show in their uh, press conference. You know, their post game press conference. What they say is they do get relaxed when they get leads, and you know, unfortunately, that's just kind of just a mental thing. It's not really a physical thing. It's just a mental relaxation. Now getting into um, KO and I'm not going to criticize Spo. You know, I love Spo. I'm, I'm probably a little bit biased towards Spo, but I feel like, you know, he's he's uh, paid his dues. He's paid his dues in the league. I'm going to trust Spo. He may, he may not make the best decisions all the time, 
but at least we're not one of those franchises where we have a revolving door of coaches and we have a leader, a true leader in Coach Spo that's going to hold it down. But as far as Kelly Olynyk goes, uh, I, I agree. I don't know how the numbers match up with this because they, the numbers say that Kelly Olynyk is the, one of the best net rating guys on the team. But when he's on the floor, he's god awful. He can't shoot the ball. He barely can pass the ball. He'll finish around the rim here and there, but that's pretty much it. So not really sure what's going on there as far as how the number goes. And um, getting into Jang Param, getting, in, you know, get, get Oladipo, it'll be interesting to see if that. And let's see if we're missing anybody else. Reader viewer. Okay. Um, Miami Heat fifth in the Eastern Conference right now. I think we're down to seventh after this game. But it's going to be interesting to see if we're able to keep those leads up. Because because we blew up so many leads, that's why we're actually losing a couple of these games. So, you know, <laughs> I also, it was, it was, if we didn't blow so many leads, we'd actually be the four seed right now, which would be interesting to say. Because we would beat the Clippers twice. We'd beat the Warriors. And we'd beat, I don't think we blew a knee lead against another team. So, you know, Baby Shaq said the same thing. We love to, he loves to blow leads as well. So, so last comment of the day, Helman Taufani, the ugly with the Gabe Vincent steal on Rajon Rondo. I 100% agree. It's probably one of the best plays of the game. The way he was able to pull it back and uh, and, and finish at the rim, it was really, really nice to see. So uh, Gabe Vincent is becoming a pretty good point of attack defender. I love what he's starting to become. If his shot becomes a little more consistent like it was in the G League, we might have a real player on our hands, another guy in the pipeline. Thank you guys so much for checking out this segment of the good, the bad, and the ugly. As always, drop your comments on this game against the Atlanta Hawks. And next video, we'll go ahead and talk about it when it comes up to that time. Thank you always for watching the video brought to you by the Five Reasons Sports Network. I'm your host, Jonathan, and I hope you guys have a great day.